it is taking time, but I will win. And there is no way that Slow Mo Joe and Scamala are going to be in all. Trump presser in the mural room, Thanksgiving 2020. At a very tiny desk, he has just finished a press conference with reporters. After talking to troops deployed overseas, Melania, his wife, is nowhere to be seen. Ground control to Major Tom. That is General Smithson, Mr. President. Whatever. Happy Thanksgiving. Are there any questions from the total losers who are in the press corps? What lies are you going to spread today? We could ask the same of you, Mr. President. You are all a bunch of animals. Ants that I want to stomp on. I want to spray you all with bug spray. I want to call the exterminator for this infestation. What are your plans from now until the inauguration of the 46th president of the United States, Joe Biden? Sleepy Joe will not be the 46th president. I can guarantee you that 100%. Sir, the Electoral College meets on December 14th. Uh, there is uh, nothing that's going to stop them from electing Joe Biden. We have a lot cooked up between now and then. We need people to take up arms, get your arms up, and head to the capitals and disrupt the Electoral College. This has a long way to go. You are going to find tremendous fraud. If only you would open your eyes and see what I see. There is no way that Sleepy is going to get 80 million votes. It was all fraud. He did so much better than Obama did. And, and there was fraud and multiple ballots. And it was all a scam, just, just a scam for the angry Democrats to win. It was all rigged, a, a rigged election with ballots and fraud and ponies and unicorns. And I'm going to get the whole apparatus moving to win this election and it is taking time, but I will win. And there is no way that Slow Mo Joe and Scamala are going to be in office. We are so going to miss this when you are in jail, sir. You are not going to have Trump to kick around anymore. Promise? Oh, scene two, Trump in the Oval Office. Brightly costumed carolers and families call out to one another and sing joy to the world softly as the children talk. Bob Cratchit, Trump's longtime security guard, comes in. He takes some Xmas candy from the mound and puts it into his pocket. Trump's niece, Mary, enters, talks with the children, gives them coins, and sends them away with a Merry Christmas. A Merry Christmas, Uncle. Looks like Putin didn't save you. Ah, you scumbag. Still mad about the book, Uncle Don. And all those TV appearances. And the fraud lawsuit because you cheated me out of millions of my fair share of grandpa's money? What is it you want? Don't waste all day, niece. I only want to wish you a Merry Christmas, uncle. You need to climb down off that cross you are on. You are too fat to be a martyr. I thought the evangelicals would save me. I was their god. They already have a god. Three, in fact, and no one would mistake you for a holy ghost. How the hell did I lose this election? You let people die of COVID, attacked the press, used your Twitter feed to intimidate other Republicans, locked up children at the border, took babies out of their mother's arms, promoted baseless conspiracy theories, referred to women you didn't like as pigs, <laughs> made fun of people with disabilities, sent lawyers to courts to try to take away health care from poor people, acted like a third world dictator, put your children on the government payroll, didn't pay your taxes, lied, cheated, stole, didn't pay contractors, took election help from Russia. Enough already. Your grandpa never liked you anyway. Uncle. Niece, none of what you said is true. It is totally fake news from your dikey liberal friends at MSDNC. Uncle, you are going to have to face the truth about the hurt and pain that you have caused. It is not too late, even for you. Leave me alone. The election is not over till I say it's over. I will leave tomorrow for Mar-a-Lago and 
this country will not have Trump to kick around anymore. Uncle, it's all over. The lying, the cheating, the fraud, it is all over. Soon the new attorney general will be appointed. They will find out what has been going on and they will arrest you. Bad fake news. Don't be angry, uncle. Come tomorrow to dinner with me and the rest of the family. I want to be alone. Where is Melania? She left me and, and took the kid. Baron? Probably. So she finally left you. You should have been nicer to her. Less sex with porn stars, playboy bunnies, and all the other women. I am surprised she stuck around this long. I treated her good. Well, good enough. She didn't look like she used to. I, I would have dumped her five years ago, but she said that she would stay to build her brand. Uncle, come to Christmas with the whole family in New York. And now that the election is over, it's we can- It's not over. I wish you would change your mind, Uncle. I have some people I want you to meet about a book deal in New York. So, a Merry Christmas, Uncle. Wait. How big a deal? Huge. It would be an eight-figure deal, uh, bigger than Obama's. You would get a ghostwriter again. I, I don't know what you mean. You hired me to be your ghostwriter once. Right. Are, are you part of the package? What's your cut? I get 10% of the gross off the top for putting the deal together. I will get a team of ghostwriters and I will coordinate the work, but no advance, but I do get expenses. Tell you what, I will take a deal, but you have to give me 50% of your take on top of what the publisher gives me. After all, this is my deal. You get nothing without me. No more than 10%. I put this deal together after all. 25. 15. 20, final offer or I walk. Okay. 20%. I would have gone down to 17. You cheated yourself there, niece. Now I've got your money and my money. <laughs> yes. I certainly have learned my lesson. Oh, well. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> loser. Mm. But I will meet you in New York then on Christmas Day. I can't disappoint the publisher. I will be there. Merry Christmas. Mary hesitates as if to say something more, narrows her eyes, like she just caught a rat. She sees that Trump has gone to get the TV remote and has started to watch Fox News. As she leaves, the doorbell rings. Oh. Four years in this dump, and I still don't know where the damn bells are coming from. A rabbi from APAC enters, causing the doorbell to ring again. Ratchet. Yes, Mr. President. The bell, idiot, see to it. Yes, sir. He goes to the entrance. He does a silly salute in the manner of F Troop or a bad British military comedy. A figure book deal, and I won't have to split it with a third wife. Uh, what's her name? But who's the loser now? It's the rabbi, sir, with an important matter regarding Israel. What more do they want? If they want anything from me now, they're going to have to build a Trump Tower, Tel Aviv. Right this way, sir. Yes, yes, Rabbi, what do you need now? You Jews were not that great to me in this election after all that I did for Yids. Mr. Trump, thank you for all you do for Israel. I am here today to ask for a donation. We are going to name an orphanage after you. I don't want an orphanage named after me. I want the Trump Tower Tel Aviv named after me. I want it to be the biggest, tallest, most beautiful building in the city. We don't need any children in orphanages. They should be working. When did we stop thinking that workhouses were a bad idea? If these kids can't go to work, then it is best to just get rid of them, get rid of the, the surplus population. We named a whole settlement after you. Isn't that enough? From men go and pray there for the Jared deal. So their ships got to convert to them. Right. 
is that built yet? No, but there is a lovely sign there. Is it gold? Of course, Jerusalem is called the city of gold. How could we do less? Right, Jews like gold. Is Jared around? I have some documents for him to sign. Nah, he's headed to New York to be with his family for the holidays. But Mr. President, he is Jewish. Hanukkah was weeks ago. Oh, right. Um, maybe he is celebrating the after Christmas sales. You Jews like bargains, right? That's why you don't move Hanukkah to Christmas, so you get better deals. Maybe you could just make a donation to the orphanage. A million should be good. Do you need to borrow my pin? Rabbi. I don't give a flying nun about the orphans in Israel. I make orphans here and I don't care about them. I created more orphans than any president in history ever. I don't need any more. So you get the hell out of my office and don't come back until you have that Trump Tower Tel Aviv deal all linked up. And I'm not coming with any cash on this. It's all up to Jews. So Jews pay for it, Jews build it, and you put your name on it. Now that is a deal we can refuse. I have caught you at a bad time. I will follow up with Jared. Do you need his number? No, I always have it. Next time I see you bring cash or, or diamonds. You people love diamonds, don't you? Happy holidays, Mr. President. That is Merry fucking Christmas to you. Trump has picked up the remote control again. He is listening to Fox News. Tonight on Fox News, a look at Christmas in the concentration camps at the border. We have been let in and see that it is not bad at all. All those democratic lies will be disproven tonight. Trump looks at the TV as he watches. He looks up as if he has heard it, but never focuses on the actual scene. The dinner lady rings the bell slowly. The children are fortunate to have a meal and a bed to sleep in. They would be, as in their country, they would be sleeping on a dirt floor. Really, this is a kindness that we are doing to them. The poorly clad, dirty children line up and file by to get their evening dish of gruel. The children are receiving a new Trump Foods product. It is dehydrated, then rehydrated with liberal tears. Mashed, it's a mashed turkey-like product. It's called Soylent Brown. Best idea I ever had. All the leftovers from the golf resorts and all of the Trump properties are taken from the scrapped plates of guests to make this healthy, nutritious offering from the Trump family of foods, Industrial Edition. Songs off stage, carols, adorn the Oval Office. Cratchit, Cratchit. You don't have to scream so loud, I'm right here. I had to scream over the damn carolers. Cratchit closes the door to the portico and walks out. Close that door firmly. I don't want it opening again today. It's evening, sir. Is it? Christmas evening, sir. Oh, you want all day off tomorrow, I suppose. If it would be okay with you, yes, I would. It is Christmas. And I want to make sure that I'm there when the doctor calls me about my little Tim. Yes, it, it's Christmas. I, I saw that the wife put up the decorations this year and, and they kind of creeped me out. What do you think of them? Uh, um, they are very uh, Tim Burton-esque this year. Well, it's not convenient for me for you to be off work right now, but okay. But listen up, Buttercup, as soon as we leave the government payroll, you are back to minimum wage. Absolutely. And be here early on the 26th. I will be in New York, but I want you here until the transition team is over. I want you to go around and collect all the pens you can find because we are going to sell them on eBay. I will, sir. Then off, off. Yes, Mr. President, and happy holiday to you. Merry Christmas! And to you, sir. 
Cratchit exits. As soon as Cratchit opens the door, the sounds of the caroling begins again, very bright and loud. Trump goes around the room, turning out the lights, leaving just the glow of the TV on, talking to himself. Christmas Eve, carolers, the election. I am never leaving this White House, and I have 73 million supporters who will stop them. He opens his door and peers out. Who let all these kids in? He picks up the phone. Hey, make sure none of these kids runs off with anything. We are going to sell all of it. All of it. Don't they have any white kids who can sing? Where is that fucking Salt Lake City Kids Choir? It must have been that flipping Romney again. The children are heard singing carols for a moment. Scene three, Trump talks to Michael Cohen. Trump wanders around the Oval Office, looking increasingly disheveled and confused. Tremors in the hands if he picks something up. There is no one there. It is ghostly quiet. Where the hell is everyone? Don't people work here anymore? Has everyone left me? Hello? Hello? Trump pulls the drapes closed, changes into a white robe. Trump lays down on the sofa. He picks up his phone to start tweeting. I am not going to leave the White House ever. No one can make me. I won this election fair and square. The whole thing was rigged in my favor, not in Biden's, just like last time. Where the hell is the Secret Service? Where are all the secretaries? Why is no one here? Old lawyer appears out of the darkness. Trump watches, unable to speak. Trump rubs his eyes, believing him to be dreaming. Trump is startled at first, but then recovers. Michael Cohen, you rat fucking bastard. Hello to you too. I thought they had you on house arrest. Well, uh, I had a meeting across the street with the uh, new president. <laughs> I did not concede the election, Cohen. Get that straight. Okay, Donald, it's time to leave. I'm not leaving. I did a great job for this country, the best. I did the best job for this country. No one could do better. No one will ever do better than me. I know you think that, but it's just not true. Also, uh, the earth is not flat. Uh, there is no deep state conspiracy getting in your way. And yes, uh, Melania definitely fakes it. What do you want from me, Cohen? Are you wired? Are there other people listening to me right now? <laughs> Hopefully, uh, but not the people that you think. What the fuck do you want from me? I am not flipping on him. Who are you flipping on? Nobody. I, I, I didn't say anything. You didn't hear anything. It is all a lie. Yeah, okay. I don't have time for this. I have to get back, but I wanted to warn you about something. The feds? No. Putin? No. That broad in New York, the attorney general who's going to get my tax returns and prove that I'm lying? Oh, her? Well, yeah, you should definitely be afraid of her. What she is going to do, do to you is going to be effing disgusting. <laughs> Door opens and music is played, song caroling. Who are all these carolers? Why is there nobody here for me? I'm here for you. You hear me? Wh whoever's listening, I'm not leaving this White House because I have squatter's rights. Looks like I'm not the only one under house arrest. Cohen, how did you get in here? I got the password from George Soros. Really? No! Not really. What are you, high? You know, that anti-Semitic BS that your supporters are pushing is gonna get us killed. You gotta cut that crap out. What the hell is wrong with the Secret Service? How could they just let you walk in here like that? Well, half of them are sick of COVID and the other half are sick of you. They work for me? You know, they work for the American people, not for you. What do you want with me? Well, I'm here to warn you that the feds are closing in. 
They have the tax returns and they have found the Epstein recordings. Well, how did they get the recordings? Why? I gave them to them. <laughs> That's not possible. They're all supposed to be in Moscow. Yeah, I got copies. I thought you were supposed to be on my side. Okay, yeah, I thought that too, till Mueller and the boys from the FBI came knocking and discovered all your dirty secrets. Then you tossed me aside faster than one of your wives. Why are you here? I carried your secrets in my life with you, and now I am bound to go from the FBI office to the state AG's office, singing like a canary to stay out of jail. I am housebound, frozen in time, and it's the only chance I got to get out and see the world. And, and what's with all these boxes you've got? More documents. You know, they, they didn't get all of them last time, and now I got to drop them off tonight so they can file on you before the statute of limitations. Cohen opens one of the boxes. Uh, you want to see what's in here? It's all lies. I, I didn't do any of this stuff. It wasn't me. I don't know what you're talking about. It's only the angry Democrats and all of their lies. I, I didn't do any of this. It was all you and Weaselberg because I had nothing to do with it. <sighs> you know, this is a list of all the companies that you own, all the tax documents, bank records, receipts, and the real books. That was all you and the other Jews. I had nothing to do with it. Nothing. You cheated, but I was the one who got done dry. I didn't cheat on my wife, my taxes, or my country. You did all that. If you're here to lecture me or to try to get money out of me, I have no time for it. Get out of here. You're fired. Donald, you can't fire me more than once. You are fired. You going to fire me? Are you going to fire me? Looks like you the one who got fired. The American people dumped you. Putin dumped you. And now Melania has dumped you. You're finished. No way. I've got 73 million reasons why I'm staying put. You've got one chance at redemption. Take the book deal. Tell the country what you've done. Tell them all about Putin, the Deutsche Bank, the money in China. Tell them about all of it. I am admitting nothing. I've done nothing wrong. You did it all. I did nothing and you are to blame. Ugh, this is your last chance. You know, it'll be the greatest comeback story of all time. You'll be in the entertainment news again, all of it. But you have to tell the truth. Tonight, you will be visited by three ghostwriters who will ask you questions. And you have to be honest because they're going to fact check all of it. Is that the chance? I've just got to talk to some writers. Mark my words, Donald. This is not going to end well unless you come clean. No. You do this, you mook. Take the damn deal. You tell the truth and the country gets to heal and you are, are free to live your life. There is no way that I'm admitting anything. You will never be free of any of this. Your legal debt will break you and you will not be welcome anywhere ever again but a jail cell. They will lock me up. Mm -hmm. I've cut a deal for you. One final favor from an old friend who had your back for 10 years. You get to keep the money from the book deal and do a short stint on house arrest at Mar-a-Lago just for show. I mean, you can still play golf, play tennis, and have as many young visitors as you like. All you have to do is tell the truth. If you don't do this, the feds and the New York State, they're going to go after the kids. So? <sighs> Expect the first at one. The second at two, and the third right at 4 a.m. Listen to them. Take the freaking deal. Don't be stupid, Donnie. Michael, don't, don't leave me. I, I need a lawyer. Michael, Michael. Goodbye, Donald. I will see you in New York City at the signing deal. At Cohen's last words, he disappears out the door. Trump nods off to sleep on the sofa, but not before he types Mary Kafifi on Twitter. 
Chimes from a grandfather clock. Trump, Trump wakes with a start to the sound of the chimes. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. It, it can't be twelve. No, not, not twelve midnight. It can't be. I haven't slept the whole day through. Twelve. Yes. Yes. Tw twelve noon. He rushes to the windows of the Oval Office in his robe and looks out. Back, 12, midnight. Two small chimes are heard. Could have passed, but it, it just rang 12. 15 minutes haven't gone by, not, not so quickly. Again, two small chimes are heard. A, a quarter to one. The ghostwriter that they're supposed to be here at one, they're, they're to come at one. He hurries to his bed as the chimes ring again. One. Scene four, the first ghostwriter passed. Trump wakes again, sound chimes. The hour is struck again by a large street clock and the first ghostwriter enters. Are you the, the first ghostwriter that Michael Cohen told me about? I am. Who are you? I'm here to talk about your past. I can't change the past. No, you can't. Then why are you here? I'm here to help you. The first ghostwriter shows a photo from his past in which two boys greet each other in the street. Oh, that's, that's Ben something and, and Jack, I, I can't remember. Jack, Jack Walton, oh, I haven't thought about them in years. We were at New York Military Academy together. We would. We'd stay up late talking about what we would do when we got older, lying about all the women we wanted to bag, all the pussy we were going to grab, dreaming about how we were going to be so rich. And there I am in the corner. What, what am I doing? I, I can't quite see it. I'm reading a book. What are you reading? Reading? Oh, it, it, it was nothing. Stories about adventures, make believe, and take me away from where I was, take me away from all of it. Oh, I, I can see it now. I was reading Alibaba. What a wonderful story. I would jump on my bed and command the genie to take me to the gate of Damascus. You know, I just found out that that's in Syria. Who knew? Uh, many people do. You know, that phone you are holding so tightly and never seem to be out of your sight can also bring you information anytime you want it. I used to love to read and then something happened. Do you remember? You know, I don't. Funny. Who gave you the books? It wasn't your father or mother, was it? No, it was my older brother. He would give me books when I saw him. He was a pilot, always flying off to some adventure. Freddy. Freddy. It's, it's the way kids are. I, I lost myself in those books. It, it didn't matter if the books were silly. It was just a place that I could go in my mind that made everything okay. But I stopped reading and I'm the most successful man on the planet. Uh, no, you're not. Uh... Not even close. I am the richest man in the whole world. I have more money than Gates, the Google guys, and Apple all in one. I have more money than anyone. Well, after this election and all the legal bills you have to pay, you're not going to be able to buy a cup of coffee at Starbucks. It, it doesn't matter. My fans will give me the money. What about this uh, video? On a laptop, Fred, Trump's brother, runs in and goes to child Trump. Fred. Brother, dear brother. Dear, dear Freddy. I've come to bring you home for Christmas. We are going to convince dad and mom to let you stay for good. Pack your things, let's go. Wait, just, just let me look at him a, a minute longer. My brother was the best person to me. The ghostwriter says nothing. Trump turns away from them and the light goes out on the computer. He was 
so brave and strong, flying away like that off to adventures and women. I wanted to be him, but he had a drinking problem. He could do anything, but he couldn't kick that booze. He told me never to drink, and I promised him on the spot that I would never do it. Your father was very hard on him. He said that flying a plane was like driving a bus. Sure, he was. He was, he was supposed to take over the business. He wanted to fly, but the drinking got in the way. It was never supposed to come to me. It was all supposed to go to Fred. I was going to play golf. He died from a heart attack after he washed out flying. He ended up living upstairs in the house in Queens where we grew up. It was not much of a life. He was working on boilers for dad like some loser. But his death hit you hard. Well, well, all of us have that, haven't we? Childhoods, sadness, but we grow and we become men, masters of ourselves. He had two children? Two children, and, and one of them is Nasty Mary. Your niece? Yes, yes, Mary, my niece, Mary, Mary, quite contrary. You cheated her and her brother, and your little cousin was cerebral palsy, uh, out of the money from your father's estate. You wrote the will yourself. They had to sue you. Yeah, that really pissed me off. All the money should have gone to me. The ghostwriter shows a video, Trump holiday party to begin. It is heard first from a great distance, then Trump becomes aware of it. I have no time for this. Referencing the video, Fred Trump Sr., young Donald and Freddie appear busily preparing for the party. Hey there, Donald, Freddy. Dad, Dad, it is so good to see him again. You miss him? Yes, I miss him. He was the best father I could have hoped for. I was such a tough child to raise. I was always mouthing off, saying the wrong thing, not paying attention. I was a real screw up. Sounds like a normal day for you. My dad was hard on Fred. He told him that he was nothing, so he would work hard, maybe too hard, but my dad never thought that I would amount to much, and now I am president of the United States. My boys, no more work tonight. It's Christmas Eve. Freddy, Christmas, Donald. Let's get to the dinner table before a man can say federal indictment. Dad, you are the best. One day I'm going to be president. You, you will see and then you will be proud of me. Uh, no chance in hell. Freddie here is going to be president before you. There is no one dumb enough to vote for Don. I want to be an airline pilot. Sure, you can fly Air Force One for me. Fred and I sneaked apricot brandy off the table and, and we got drunk. At first we toasted the future when we would be grown and, and out of the house and it was the most fun I'd ever had. Then why would you treat your family so badly? His kids needed you and you took all the money for yourself. Dad wanted me to have the money so I wrote the will for him. I knew what he wanted, what was right and I took it. Do you have any regrets? Only that I didn't take all of it. Mary is ungrateful for the money she got. I give up. Well, you, you can't give up. I have to get that deal. It's always about you, isn't it? Pretty much. I was just thinking about Bob Cratchit. Did you want to do something for him or his family? No, I was thinking that he owes me 20 bucks. I gotta get that from him before I leave. This is hopeless. Did you see nothing here tonight that would make you change? No. Are we done? Nearly. <laughs> What's that music? I know it. I was, I was at a party where I met Jeffrey Epstein 
and we were surrounded by broads, young, hot blondes. Ooh, that one is hot, sexy, and 15, I mean 18, just the way I like it. I wonder what happened to her. I assume she's old now, fat, obviously dyed, gray hair, covered over with an unconvincing blonde. It is awful how women get old. Donald watches the party on the computer screen. It is a shame how some people let themselves go. Look, you told her you wanted to marry her. We would have made such a great couple. She was young, so young. I would have married her if only she'd given me better head. She was all teeth. It was just awful. She could have been the Mrs. Donald Trump. Her loss, she was probably just another one of Epstein's girls in the end. No, no, I, I dodged a real bullet with that one. She could have changed you. You got to, got you to open up. Been an honest, caring person who only wants the best for humanity. No, I'm, I'm still glad I didn't marry her. It was a mistake not to marry her. A mistake. Can you hear me? Are you are you even listening? Then get the F out of here. I don't need you. You are trying to mess with my story, trying to write me as some weak slob who cries because his dad was mean to him. I don't want this as a part of my story. There was another Christmas a few years ago when Cohen had his office raided. No, I'm I'm not looking. I couldn't prevent it. I did not choose for him to get caught. When you, when he was raided, what did you do then? Um, how did you help him? Did you take care of his family, his legal bills? Or uh, just like you bailed on your brother's kids? I tried to get that little Georgia fairy to not arrest him, but he didn't listen. But his family? Yeah, well, he turned out okay. He was only in for a few months and then he was put on house arrest and he got a book deal. It wasn't so bad. I'm out of here. Not yet. There, there must be so much stuff that we could still talk about. Like that time I let Stephen Miller talk me into that crazy Muslim band that blew up in our faces. I was only here to find out what trauma brought you to this place. The White House? Do you mean how hard I worked to get here? Struggling to get by in school with my dad paying all the bills or all that money that he gave me while he was living and the rest of it that I stole when he died. That would make a great book. Then write it. Call it The Art of the Steel. Door slam. First ghostwriter exits. Trump slumps down on the sofa. Trump sleeps, the clock chimes. Trump sits upright in bed as he hears the chimes. One minute until two. No one here. No one's coming. A larger clock strikes two o'clock. The second ghostwriter, present. A light comes on, Trump becomes aware of it and goes slowly to it. He sees the second ghostwriter. Bannon? Hello, Mr. President. But you can't be not Bannon. Well, people say we look alike. You really do look like him. Is this some trick to get me work with to get me to work with you again? I heard that you were all washed up. I am not Bannon, but if it'll help you get through this session with the truth, you can call me whatever you like. I will be your Leninist tonight. It is just 28 days till no one will care about your tweets anymore. How does that make you feel? But you're sure that you're not Stephen Bannon? No, Mr. Trump. Think of me as just your ghostwriter, here to capture the story of your present state and by extension that of the country. It, it's, it's President Trump? Yes, for now. You, you see what you will see, Trump, no more and certainly no less. Will you talk to me this Christmas Eve? I will, but I want you to get the facts straight. It never bothered you before. Are you sure that you're not Steve Bannon? Let's begin. <clears throat> Where are all the children you separated at the border? I really don't care. When was your last call with Putin? Last night. 
How did COVID not kill you? I'm probably immortal. Where is all the money from your inaugural? Betting on prostitutes. What really happened with Kim Jong-un? We made out. Did you make a deal with him to develop that beachfront property in North Korea? I don't remember kissing. What does Putin have on you? Sometimes women, sometimes him. Is it more than that sex tape? There are multiple tapes. Did Putin get the tape from Epstein? I don't know Epstein. Why did you let the Saudis get away with killing Khashoggi? I'm a horrible person who is irredeemable. How much money do you have? Not nearly enough. And where are your tax returns? That's that's a lot there, Mr. I could I could answer all those questions. I, I mean, I could because I know all the answers. I have the best answers, huge answers, the biggest answers and the bestest answers possible. Why not? I don't want to answer any of those questions. I just want you to write about how brilliant I am and how I saved this nation from Antifa mobs and how I was great for the stock market and rich people in this country. This book is supposed to be an honest look at your presidency. You can't have overlooked all the trauma that you've caused people. In this COVID crisis, when people were dying in the hallways at hospitals and EMTs can't get to you fast enough to save people, you've just kept golfing. There's been no national day of mourning for the more than a million people that have died in the United States. We've not had time to grieve. There's no such thing as COVID. It's just a fancy flu. I had it and I was fine. It's, it's like the chicken pox. You get it and then you don't get it again. So you might as well get it over with, like I did, because now I'm immune. It's your book, Mr. President, but no book publisher is going to let you post false or misleading statements in a book. Only Twitter and Facebook allow you to do that. Why does some a-hole on the left coast sitting in the Silicon Valley get to decide what truth is any more than some fat Jewish publisher in New York if, if my presidency has proved anything, it's that I am the only one telling the truth, like with this vaccine thing. I, I told the entire nation that after the elections were over, they would put out notice for vaccine, and now there's like 50 of them, so it's all a hoax. So what does that tell you, Mr. Trump? That the pharmaceutical companies want a Democrat in the White House so they can push them around. They don't like that I put price controls on medicine. I signed four executive orders on this drug thing. I can't remember all of it, but the seniors loved it. Mr. Trump, those orders did almost nothing to ease drug prices. It was a show for the cameras, nothing new. What, what do you mean? I, I signed the executive orders and that makes it the law. The president does not make the law. You just directed the agencies to change policy. Biden will underdo all the executive orders on day one. There's a printer running 24 set of them to void them all out for his signature. That can't be right. Because why, why couldn't I just undo that shitty Obamacare then? Thank Jesus that you didn't figure that out because you could repeal it, but you had nothing to replace it with. Throwing that many people off health care access would have made it impossible. There would have been rioting in the streets. And we would have not done all that well when it came to the corona. So we're all glad for your incompetence. That was Senator McCann artist's mistake. And I would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for that meddling John McCain, the big fat loser. McCain was a war hero, a fighter pilot, and served his country tirelessly for decades. He was a loser. Is that what you're going to write? That he was a hero? You just don't see him the way that I see him. You are wrong, and I am right. What are you thinking about? My, my security chief. Bob Cratchit? Yeah. Do you want to talk to him? You don't have to say anything, but it might help you connect to the readers. You have to give a little about yourself. You'll sell more books that way. I was just thinking about his kid. He seems too sick. It's, it's not like when I had it. Do you feel guilty about giving him the COVID? I did not do that. 
You did, actually. Contact tracing shows that you gave it to Cratchit and he gave it to Timmy. He's so tiny in this picture. He is small. So small. Why can't he just get the same treatment as I did? And, and why didn't that kid wear a mask? Because you told his father not to. Yes, well, that's, that's what the so-called experts told me. But you knew back in January how bad this was going to be. But they said no masks, and then they said yes masks. It was all screwed up. They didn't get it right. I got it right. I saved lives. No, you didn't, Mr. Trump. I did some research on Mr. Cratchit and his family. Do you know what Cra the Cratchit can't even afford a two-bedroom apartment? The kids all sleep in the bedroom, and Mr. and Mrs. Cratchit sleep on the sofa. Now that tiny little Tim is sick, he sleeps in the bedroom all by himself, all alone. He can't be touched or comforted by anyone. In many ways, he's just like the children you jailed at the border. Well, it's, it's a shame that his kid is sick and all, but I hardly think that it's my fault because if, if that were true, then that would mean I was, I was responsible for all the other deaths too. And then there's no way that that's true. What would you say to the families of the people that died from COVID? I would say, look at how many lived. It's a pandemic that no country can stop. No words of comfort, nothing to say about the empty chair at the table or why they can't be with their family at Christmas. Will tiny Tim live? He is very ill and it is made worse by the cold in the apartment. But you haven't told me if he will live or if he will die. If he be likely to die, he had better do it and reduce the surplus population. Erase those words from your thoughts. You are not a doctor or an expert or anything. Your life is not more important than others. Why do you live when so many have died? People die every year from the flu. This is just like that. Was Obama responsible for all those flu deaths? I am not a doctor, though I definitely know more than them because I went to an Ivy League college. You went to Fordham before Wharton. You have a bachelor's degree in economics, nothing to do with medicine. You are not a doctor. I bet that Bob is at home right now, raising a glass to me and to my generosity. That is a horrifying thought. You are wrong. He is thankful for this job. You just don't get how loyal he is to me. He doesn't have insurance to cover the cost of Timmy's care. I have heard enough. This is all just that liberal crap. If Bob took Timmy to the hospital, he could get care. Yes, but they would charge him thousands of dollars for his care. How would he pay for food and shelter and pay off that debt? No one told him to have kids that he couldn't afford. He could afford them if you paid him more. Then he should just get another job that pays better. You see, I solved the problem all by myself with my big, 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 big brain. Poor people should just make more money. Economics, obviously. Or inherit all the money they need from their father, lose all the money they make and graft the rest, all while financing from dubious sources and then claim to be self-made? It worked for me. Well, we will see how long it does. Now, how about Putin's election interference? Were you aware of that before the election? I didn't know all of it. What does Putin have on you? The loans from Deutsche Bank. He has some video of me and there were some real estate transactions. Uh, that would be the country road mansion in Palm Beach. That was payoff. I got 50 million more than what I paid for it. I didn't question it. It sold well in 2008 well before the election it it wasn't to run it was a reward for going after president obama and weakening him with all that birther nonsense 
Plus, it gave me a chance to outbid Epstein, but I let him use the property while it was vacant. Uh, but there were more transactions after that. Condos. Russians want to move money out of Russia. They can dodge the Majitsky Act by purchasing product, property. Is that why the condos were selling so well? Sure. The condos were not finished all that well. We would just get the inspection certificate and then we'd move all the good appliances and cabinets to another kitchen in the unit. And then we'd call for that inspection. These places were just empty shells. They, no one was ever supposed to live in them, but eventually we realized that we could run a good business by letting people stay in the property while it was vacant. It was kind of like an Airbnb for people who want to lay low or store items there. Like, like if a guy is going through a divorce and wants to keep his collection separate, he could stash it there. Or if he has a mistress and wanted to keep her away from other people, he could lock her up in that tower. How medieval of you. Thank you. That's, that's really nice of you to say. And uh, what about the Russian ambassador in this room? What was that about? That was just Putin showing a little dominance. It was just a game. A strong man, show of force, it, it didn't mean anything. But you are only focusing on the... Yeah, exactly. You are only focusing on the bad. There well, is good. Families will be together tonight to laugh and, and eat well. Rich people, the important ones. At the home of your niece, she is throwing a big party over Zoom so everyone can be together. No, I'm, I'm not going to that. They hate me. I want to be down at Mar-a-Lago, dancing and eating at the buffet with all of my friends. You don't have any friends. The one you haven't turned state's evidence on is stealing the silver out of this place. Everyone uses everybody else. You are using me now. I'm using you. It's just the way the world works. Nobody does anything for nothing. I think I have what I need. I'm going to go. No, but, but, but the first ghostwriter wrote so much more. He was writing about your past. There was a lifetime he could choose from. I have only this day, one day, and you, Trump. And I've had it up to here with you. I have to be done in a few minutes. Are you the last ghostwriter to come here tonight? No, there's one more. Your last chance to keep this deal together. But I'm not sure how much they can help you. You have ignored the misery in this country, exploited it for your own personal gain. It's a pandemic. How was I supposed to stop it? I shut it down from China. Mask or oppression. They rob your freedom. Faker Fauci is a fool. Go out and be with friends and get the COVID. It's not bad. Just get over with it like I did. It's not that bad. Get it done. There are over 375,000 people who won't be home for the holidays, sir. You have killed more people in one year than Stalin did. You have done nothing to offer this world and nothing to give. You had best take a hard look at yourself while you still can. Scene six, the ghostwriter future. Trump jolts up from the couch. He is entirely, entirely alone for a long moment in the Oval Office. He is frightened by the darkness and feels it approaching him. Suddenly he stops, senses the presence of the third ghostwriter, turns toward him and sees him. The ghostwriter is bent and cloaked. The physical features are indistinguishable. You are the third ghostwriter to bother me tonight. The ghostwriter says nothing. You're supposed to write about my future? The ghostwriter says nothing. Are you just going to stand there? What should I do in the future? Tell me what lies ahead for me. It'll better be sun, fun, and her hair in a bun time. Drinks with little umbrellas and barely legal girls in bikinis. Tell me what is going to happen to me. I don't care about the rest. The ghostwriter says nothing. Then ask me your questions. Oh, glad to have that off. Wow, you look good enough to be the next 
Mrs. Trump. You know, I'm in the market as it happens. Do you like the weather in Florida? You would look so banging hot next to the pool at Mar-a-Lago. I'm gonna have to pass on that lovely and completely inappropriate offer. I'm here to listen to your story and write about your future plans. That, that is my future plans to rig elections, tweet, golf all the time, cash big checks and look at pretty women at the pool at Mar-a-Lago. So not all that different than what you're doing now. I will be in Florida. Let me talk to you about Bob Cratchit. I spent some time with his family and he has a child that is very sick. Did you know that? Yeah, sure. The kid will get over it. COVID is no big deal. A million plus people have died worldwide from it. Yeah, but it was just the people who didn't have the strength to fight it off. I can't listen to this. How could you not feel something for this poor child who you know who has COVID? I have two kids with COVID. It's no big deal. You just stay away from them for a little while and then they get better. My kids are strong. If Cratchit's kid gets better, then it's because he was strong. And if he doesn't get better, well, then there was nothing that we could do anyway. But tell you what, I will send the kid some hydroxychloroquine. I get a little taste from the company that makes it because when the National Stockpile purchased it all, I made a fortune. Actually, don't, don't, don't write that down. Please, don't, no. Many presidents will take up a cause after they retire. Like Jimmy Carter has Habitat for Humanity and President Bush has the Thousand Points of Light Foundation. President Clinton has the Clinton Global Initiative. Clinton should be in jail. Which one? Either. Hey, do, do, do you want to see? Let's focus on your future. What's going to be your cause? I would like to, uh, I would like to help immigrants pursue employment. That sounds like a wonderful idea and such a nice way to show how much you care about immigrants. Sure, I had two wives who were immigrants, so, so was my mom. And I was thinking I would start a foundation for the support of women who want to pursue modeling in the US. We, we would have to limit it to only the most talented. I mean, I mean, thin, really, really thin. And it would only be available to women over six feet tall and I can't really serve on the foundation board and, and the kids can't either after that little Trump foundation issue. So not clear what the best thing to do will be with that. Uh, Good grief. What about something in the arts? I could buy another painting of myself. There's been talk of you buying Fox News. Nah, Murdoch would only allow the sale over his dead body, which, you know, I thought of, but it would be too expensive and, and you know, Risky. I might take over Newsax or OAN, not really sure beyond that. Your niece said that she could not figure out what work you actually do when you hired her to ghostwrite your book. No one can tell what you do as president. You seem to play golf and watch TV a lot, but no actual work happens. That is all a lie. You are a very nasty woman. So if you did nothing when you ran Trump Inc. and you did nothing as president, then how will anyone know you have retired? You are one dumb fraud. Listen, sweetheart, you need to go home and, and fix yourself up and try to find yourself a husband because you are way too stupid to be in this business. I'm not the one who just got fired. Ghostwriter exits, Trump is left on the couch. Picks up the phone. Where the hell is Pence? Get him and Amy COVID Barrett over to the Oval Office. I am resigning tonight. We have to get the pardon stack ready. We're going to pardon everyone like Joe Exotic tonight. And then Pence is going to pardon me. And it seems like he should finally be good for something. Scene five. I am so glad that we were able to pull this deal together. I had some of, of the Jews look over the deal, but I want to personally ink it and see if I can get just a little bit more. Anti-Semitism in that statement aside, I totally agree that you could get a little more here. 
I think they built that in. I think you could get a little more too. Mr. Trump, here is the contract. You will be given $15 million up front and get 25% off the book net. I want to specify in the contract that I get the full fee for any options of feature films, movie of the week, or, or series that come out of my story. I'm thinking of a show on Trump TV, like The West Wing. No problem. Uh, we already have an exclusion for that already. Mr. Cohen tipped us off. I mean, informed. I mean, he told us you were going to drive a hard bargain. You are famous for your negotiating skills, after all. That is why we want the book. You agree everything you said is true. We can't publish it if it's not true. It's true. You got the whole story. Okay, so all I have to do is sign this and we have a deal, right? We have a deal. I think I should get more money up front. We have a deal, a, a done deal. I am not authorizing any more money. Okay, then. I walk. I will take my business to another publishing house. Not so fast. Uh, okay. I'm going to write a number down here. <clears throat> publisher hands Trump a piece of paper. Trump scribbles on it and then returns it to the publisher. Oh, no. Uh, too much. Trump writes a number again. Okay, but we're not throwing in a pony. Deal. Deal. Read the contract over and make sure you understand all of it before signing. This deal is only good in this room at this time. I am not going to let you take this contract out of here and watch you go across the street to another punisher. I mean, publisher. Trump glances over it and then puts it down. It looks okay to me. Publisher and Trump signs the contract. Publisher slaps handcuffs on Trump when they go to shake hands. What the hell? Who are you? I am your worst nightmare. You're a fat girl in a bikini? No. A woman with power. FBI. Take him away, boys. Don't be ridiculous. You can't arrest me. I got a pardon from Pence. You got a pardon from Pence, but you admitted to these after that. He can't pardon you for charges that didn't exist. And you just admitted all of it. Plus, we have a whole stack of charges we've been keeping warm for you. Then the state of New York wants to talk to you. This can't be happening. <laughs> God bless us. Everyone. Wait, wait, stop. You, you there, yes, you, grab your guns and save me. Get Bob Cratchit on the phone. He's not going to save you. He is with his son in the hospital. When we told him what you said, he was only too happy to get the same treatment for his kid. He turned over everything. You mean everything? Everything. Even the stuff in the condos. No, 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 I, I am still the president. I will be the president forever. Bye, Uncle. I'll see you on visiting day. No! Silent night. No more tweets. All is calm. All is right. We'll sleep in heavenly peace. We'll sleep in heavenly peace. Bye, Don. God bless America. <laughs> um, why don't we do some quick introductions? Um, we'll start with Doug, our director. Hi, I'm Doug Henderson, director. Hi. And where are you, Doug? What state are you in? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm in San Diego, California. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And President, Mr. President. Uh, I'm Ethan McAtee. Um, I am in Rochester, New York. And I play Donald Trump. Uh, Mr. Cohen for the defense. <laughs> Hi, uh, um, uh, my name's Adam 
Ressa, playing Michael Cohen. Uh, I live in the DMV. Uh, and that would be Virginia area, right? You got it. All right. So White House adjacent. And uh, Mr. Cratchit. Uh, my name is Scott Olson, and I am also in the Virginia area in Gainesville. Uh, Mr. Bannon slash Rabbi. Uh, yes, I'm Byron Allen, and I am in the state of Nebraska, because someone has to be. Yes, <laughs> yes, they do, because there wouldn't be any place to stop on the way from New York to Los Angeles. Exactly, and they stop, yes. <laughs> anyway, um, and uh, our second, our th or sorry, our third ghostwriter. Hi, I'm Michaela, and I'm from Ohio. Woohoo! Representing <laughs> our own Mary Trump. Uh, my my name is Carrie Peters, and I'm playing Mary Trump. I'm from North Texas. And our own Punisher. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jacqueline Jones, and I'm from Virginia. I'm AJ Campbell. I run the Quarantine Players, and tonight was my personal therapy session with uh, with the with the United States. This is everything I want Trump to say and everything I want to say to Trump. So, <laughs> God bless us, everyone. Good night, guys. Good night. Good night. Thank you all so much for participating. Um, hey, Jay, I'm staying on. Yes, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a very, very Merry Christmas or Happy Hanukkah or Merry Sol